to watch, but he can't quite make it. And there's a history of small guys who can't quite make it. Six knockouts says it all. Six wins. knockouts, that says it all. This guy in the Filipino is being shown in Manila and all over uh, Britain and Ireland this fight. They're obviously, they're big fans of our, of our Filipino pal. I th you know what, he's a, he's a pleasure to watch, Calderon. Pleasure to watch. Well, let's see him put his title on the line. It is Ivan Calderon against Rodol Mayer. Let's scare ourselves across to Madison Square Garden. Mayol, who's won his last two bouts after losing two in a row, is dangerous. He has 19 knockouts to his credit. And here we go, scheduled for 12. Calderon, the southpaw, this is his first fight at Madison Square Garden, and he's really been looking forward to it. I, I know he has, and it's a little interesting wrinkle here, uh, a little fly in the ointment, was that he was disappointed to find out he would not be part of the American television telecast, and he was told by the TV executives, right. you be sensational tonight and we'll give you a shot. Now, this is a guy who's only got six knockouts. He's a pure boxer. Let's see if he alters his style to try to impress TV executives. Wouldn't be the first time. You've seen Mayall before. Yes. And his only other fight here in the U.S. that was uh, outside of Chicago. Yes. And he lost to Solis. Yes, he did. That's Ulysses Solis, who's a terrific puncher in his own right. But I'll tell you what, Mayall had Solis on the canvas with a left hook. It was not ruled a knockdown, but I'll tell you, my eyes tell me it was. And I watched the replay today. He had him down. He had him hurt several other times. It was a very tough fight, but he was knocked out with an overhand right. So he's got some vulnerability, but he is certainly capable of hurting Yvonne Calderon. All right, they're both in at just over 106. Mayol does have four inches in height right, over Calderon. He's also got a significant reach advantage, which, you know, might make a difference here because, as I say, Calderon's a boxer. He does not, he does not look for knockouts. He did have one. Uh, I think in 2006 is the last time, but it's not his game. Right. He needs to box. How do you think the southpaw style will work against Mayo? You know, it's interesting, but in the, in the lower weight classes, you see more southpaws than you do in the, in the higher weight classes. I, I bet you that Mayo has got a pretty good, a pretty decent amount of experience against him. And another thing is. I love the left hook against the southpaw. He's got a good left hook. I think it's a great weapon. I don't think it should hurt him. And he used a good right hand lead and followed with a left hook. He's a very good straight puncher, Mayo. And he's backed up Calderon. You know, I can't emphasize enough the effect that Calderon, that it may have on Calderon that he wants to impress people in this fight because he desperately, he's 34 years old, wants right. to get a TV shot, you know, wants to get a big money fight. It's very tough for a guy who's 106 pounds and a lefty to get very much attention in this country. So we'll have to see. I mean, quite frankly, his style has not always been crowd-pleasing. He's a great boxer. For Calderon, more of a feeling out first round. They all have been a little more aggressive. A little wild with those two punches, end of round one. Okay. Mayol's first trip to New York. 
has fought most of his fights in the Philippines, Indonesia, and Japan. A couple of trips to North America. As we mentioned, the fight in Chicago or outside of Chicago a couple of years ago. Right. That was on the uh, undercard of David Diaz and Eric Morales. That was a big crowd, and I'll tell you what. You know, he stood up to that crowd pretty well. Of course, here it's a little bit different because when you fight in Madison Square Garden and you're from Puerto Rico, it's like your house. Hey, Sam, one thing I want to point out about Calderon is this guy has not fought since last August. Yeah. Last fight ended in a technical win for him, but he got cut very badly and has, has not fought in 10 months. That's a long layoff, probably the longest since he's been a significant fighter. Got cut. They went to the scorecards and he won the decision. And the thing that was interesting about that fight was that he was actually in a little bit of trouble in that fight. I know that he won he was ahead on the cards at the time of the stoppage, but he had just lost a couple of rounds and things were not exactly going his way. The cut actually came at a good time. Seems a little cautious to me. Calderon. It's possible because it was a very, very bad cut. It came from a, a clash of heads. The opponent's name was Hugo Cazares. And he had been coming on at the time of the fight, uh, at the time of the stoppage. And again, you know, ring rust, 10 months off. Slightly older fighter at 34. And this is not an easy opponent. here in New York City in the New York Golden Gloves back in 95 and won a championship. But this is his first time in the big house in the big arena. You know in the early going here Sam it just seems like Mayol is the stronger fighter which is not really a surprise but he's also pushing the champion backward. You know even if there aren't a lot of clean punches landed that always helps you win rounds. Neither man has really opened up much. No, I thought they all had a pretty good first round. This round is a little quieter. Defensively, Calderon is excellent. Well, you know, he, he doesn't hide the fact that he's, he's a defense first guy. You know, he's not out there to get hurt or, you know, particularly to hurt his opponent. He's out there to put on a boxing show like yeah. some greats have. Pernell Whitaker, I mean, would tell you the same thing. You know, I'm in there to hit and not get hit. He slips punches well. He picks off punches well with his gloves. He moves well. The question is, can he impress people with his offensive skills? The defense is certainly there. End of round two. in that second round. No, he didn't. He didn't, but he did keep the pressure on. He did keep his man moving backwards. He landed a decent one, too, near the end, but, uh, you know, you wonder how much of an advantage a champion comes in with, and if the judges watch the fight thinking that you have to go out there and win the round from the champion. You know, to me, they all won that round just because it was more aggressive, but you never know what the three judges are thinking. We'll take a look here. You'll see that Mayo has the reach able to keep Calderon at bay pretty much even without landing punches because of the length of his arms and right there really not a good punch but you saw that Calderon is trying to get away actually went between the ropes seconds out let's go let's get him out let's get him out round three scheduled for 12 WBO Junior Flyweight Championship. Ivan Calderon, the champion. And Rodel Mayol trying to take it away from him. Mayol has had two World Championship fights in the past and lost both. And you got to figure, you know, he's got to be thinking this is my last shot. You know, it's not too often you get more than three title shots, especially if you've lost, you know, all of them. But right now, he's really, I think he's presenting problems for Calderon because he fights long. He really does, and it's not Calderon's uh, style to be on the inside. He's having a tough time getting inside.
See, every time he makes Calderon take that step back, that's that's another time that Calderon cannot land a punch. And Mayola's been first a little more than Calderon has. The most effective way to fight a guy like Mayol, Sam, is to get close to him because you got to try and smother his punches. He's a long arm puncher. He wants room. He wants to be able to extend his arms when he punches. And if Calderon doesn't get close to him like that, you know, he'll never stop him from doing that. Calderon being cautioned by referee Benny, Benji Estevez. I think that might be a sign that Calderon sees the same things we do, that he's got to rough up Mayol a little bit. Occasionally, yeah, not a big fan of that point. No, it's kind of a but dangerous. Yet, yet Calderon hasn't done anything to count. Not yet, it. hasn't made him pay for it. Uh, frankly, I thought I would see more left hooks to the body for Mayol tonight because he used that very well against Archie Solis. Thing is, when you're fighting a shorter guy and you notice that Calderon's left elbow—I mean, right elbow—I should say—is down low there. It's kind of tough to sneak that left hook into the body. Solid left hand by Calderon. This is the fight he actually wants to fight now. He wants to make his man miss. He wants to use the ring. He's doing it pretty well right now. The only thing Calderon isn't doing, he's not throwing many punches. I just don't think he's found the range yet. What are your thoughts through the first three? Getting a sense of anything yet? Well, you know what? I'm kind of surprised oh God, that, uh, that there's not more pressure from Mayol because you know he's in there looking for a knockout. It's not, it's not I thought Calderon fought a pretty good third round, and I gave it to him. And I think that if he can get the range, be able to move in and out and pop Mayol with shots, he can start to fight the fight he wants to fight. But it's not going to be easy. And he's got to fight a very, very careful fight because Mayol's a big puncher. I do think we're going to see more aggression from the challenger as the fight goes on. A good house here at Madison Square Garden in anticipation of this championship bout and later on Miguel Cotto and Joshua Clotty. Round four. How do you have it scored through the first three, Wally? I got it 29 28, two rounds to one for the challenger, Mayo. But now it appears that Calderon is starting to figure out how to time this man. Calderon getting off first and throwing a combination for the first time. If there is one advantage, I would say that Calderon has here is hand speed, and I think he can exploit that, but he's got to be real quick in and out and not get caught on his way in. But considering the long arms and the reach of Mayol, wouldn't Calderon be effective working on the inside? Absolutely. I, I don't think, you know, I, I, I think that he's quick enough to go side to side and maybe slip those jabs, but I think he'd be much better off. Getting inside, trying to get under those arms, smother those punches. I just don't think it's his game. Calderon has picked it up a little bit here at the start of round four. And they all, the one on the attack a moment ago. Hmm. I'm actually surprised that Calderon is the guy doing most of the rough stuff in there. Oh, we got we got yeah. some heads. First clash of heads, and that bothered Calderon a little bit. Well, you know bit. what he's thinking about. Yeah. Thinking about that fight last August. No Mayol almost countered Calderon there with a left hand. Right hand lead by Mayol. 
Good shot. And the left hook lands by Calderon. Now again, Calderon, not a big puncher, only six knockouts in his 32 fights. So don't expect him to get his man out with one punch the way Solis did with Mayo. Oh, good right hand by Mayo. As he caught Calderon moving in. That's what Calderon's got to be, but has to be wary of on his way in. Got to move side to side. He comes straight in. He's definitely run into a fight under. Seconds of round four. <laughs> tough round to score. Before you ask me, I'm yeah. telling you, that's a tough one. I, I agree with you. Manny Pacquiao Manny, and Ringside. Manny Rinsa. Pacquiao. Stable mate. He'll be very, well, uh, of, yeah, of a male. male. And certainly he'll be interested in the main event. Oh, you know it. He'll be scouting the winner. But he's got so much on his plate already. I mean, you know, they're talking about a Shane Mosley fight. Obviously, the one everyone expects to see There's a Mayweather fight. Mayweather is the, the big talk. That would be the big the big bout. Absolutely nothing bigger than that right now in boxing. I see a little straight there. Let's see if we can see how it happened there with Calderon. The heads came together after that right uppercut. And you're right, boy, that really did. No. That affected yeah, Calderon. Nick. Nick. I'm sure he was feeling around to see if the same thing was happening again. Round five. Get him out on time. Let's go. Let's look at it from Mayo's perspective. If you're in his corner, are you liking what he's done so far? No, not at all. Not at all. Oh, again, again the heads oh. came together. Oh boy, this is getting to be a bad habit. Accidental headbutt. Accidental headbutt, Benji Estevez. And the rule so is that the they, people at ringside. Go ahead, Wally. If they stop the fight here, I believe it would be a technical draw. I think you have to complete four rounds before they go to the scorecards. Oh, we haven't completed the score they, round. Four Guess rounds. what? Yeah. My scorecard says it's a draw. And there's a cut on the forehead, dripping down. Second time they've wow. clashed heads, and this time a cut open on the forehead of the champion, Ivan Calderon. Yeah, I can't be sure, but it doesn't look like it's in the same exact spot. So let's see his response. That is a, that's a bad break. Because he knows he's bothered by it. Oh, oh wow. Watch your head, buddy. Again. I think Calderon wouldn't be unhappy if this fight was stopped. My goodness. You can You're see Calderon noticeably upset yeah. and concerned about the cut. You know, interestingly enough, he may have initiated that because he's the guy trying to get inside. Here's the doctor checking it out. When we see the replay, let's see whose head hits who's first. But Calderon's the guy coming in low and then coming up. It's possible that he, he initiated the contract uh, contact. He says yes. There's one high on the fire, yeah. but there's a is that a second cut right over the, over the eyebrow? eyebrow. Is that right? The one that stopped the fight with Cazares was right in the middle of his head. So this is a different spot. Fans urging on Calderon. Wow. Still two minutes to go in round five. Could very well be the winner of this round could win the fight. If they were to go to the cards. So, I mean, this is a crucial minute and 45 seconds for both of these guys. And they all with a headlock and a, a punch on the break. Yeah. This, this fight is getting a little ugly. They're both losing their composure a little bit. Now Calderon seems to have collected himself to the point where he's not letting the cut 
bother him. Well, I think he he realizes wisely that, you know, if this is an even fight and he wins the fifth round, you know, he could get away with a technical win here. He caught Mayol coming in, but then the referee cautioned him about an yeah. elbow. There was a little extra, a little extra contact there from the elbow. That's this is getting to be a very, very rough fight. shocked that Mayol is not being more aggressive right now. He's got his man bleeding. He's got the guy disconcerted at the very least. He should be throwing everything he's got. Now that the blood is dripping down the far end of Calderon. I don't know if it's getting into his eye. But you know he's not liking it. You know that. And I just cannot imagine why Mayol is not pressing this advantage more. They work to do in the corner of the champion. Left hook landed by Mayo. And the right hand by Calderon. End of round five. That's going to be a tough cut to close, too, because of where it is. You can't really squeeze it together there. Or maybe you can. Respira duro. Drink, drink the water. Drink. Stop. It's very quiet in Mayol's corner. I've been telling him, you got to go after this guy because you're on the verge of getting him out of there. All right, let's take a look if we can see exactly when this happened. You see, there's already blood there. So that was from the earlier scrape. And now, no, it was, it was right, Mayol. 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 Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yep. But still, it's a stylistic thing where the two of them are coming together. You know, the lefty-righty thing, and you'll see the way the heads just bang together as they miss punches. And you can see the blood there. That's uh, That should be a target for Mayo. Calderon's slow to come out of his corner, and his corner people slow to leave the ring. Now they're out for round six. Well, the scorecard's right now super important because, as we know, it was ruled an accidental butt. The fight is stopped because of that cut. The man who is leading is going to win. There's only one cut that's high on the far end. There was no cut over the eyebrow. That was just some blood that had dripped down. Let's we'll see how long it takes for that thing to start bleeding again. And is there a greater sense of urgency on the part of Calderon? Uh, I certainly don't see it in the challenger who's on his third strike here. You know, I think that right now Calderon is more concerned with protecting himself and not getting that cut any worse. Mayol, on the other hand, should be firing that right hand. A good job by the cornerman of... Calderon and closed the cut for the time being. Yeah. Not a drop yet. See, that's the kind of thing that, that uh, Ro uh, Rodel Mayall has to do. He's got to pressure his man. He's got to throw some punches. I think he should start to the body with his left hook and then try to land that right hand right on the area of the cut. Now, there we go. We've got a little yeah. blood. There's some. And there's the there's punch. the right hand to the head. Yeah. And, and now it's bothering. Now it's definitely bothering Calderon. I'm taking another look. And the doctor's coming up. The referee has called up the doctor to take a look at the champion, Ivan Calderon. That's a nasty Shaking cut. his head, that's it. Scroll around. Scroll around. Scroll around. So the referee has told the judges to score this round. I that think will count. They will go to the scorecards. And I think you have to give that round to Mayol, but I think I the fifth round went to Calderon. It's going to be a very interesting thing. My scorecard wow. comes up dead even after six. Wow. That's just amazing. Twice in a row, 
the same kind of a cut, same situation. Those second and third rounds where it was tough to score. Those are the could be, could go either way and decide this fight. Right. Those are the decisive rounds. It all depends, I think, on who gave the second round to who. I gave it to Mayol. Conceivably, it could have gone to the champion. Either way, this kind of cries out for a rematch. Absolutely. I mean, nothing was settled here tonight. Nothing was settled. Here's the uh, closing sequence of the fight. There was a pretty good right hand. Benji Estevez again brings uh, Calderon over to the doctor. And quite frankly, look, you know, it's not my blood being spilled, but I, I thought they could have fought a little bit more, quite honestly. It looked, on that last look that we had, it looked like it was getting deeper. It yeah. looked like it was, that it could be a serious problem the rest of the way. Well, yeah, but it didn't also seem to me that it was going into his eyes. Okay. However, Calderon was not showing a willingness to keep this thing going. So now we await the judge's decision. They will score round six, which was ended early. And this big house, which uh, favors the native of Puerto Rico, Ivan Calderon, a little nervous right now for their, their favorite. Calderon was slow to start. Never set a tempo in the early rounds, so those first couple of rounds could have gone either way. And then certainly a big factor. And then the cut was opened up. Mayol, who used his reach advantage well to land some straight right hands. But the clash of heads a couple of times Thought about the cut on the forehead. And now the champion, Ivan Calderon, awaiting the decision. Accidental headbutt, stopping the fight, forcing the stoppage of the fight. And they go to the scorecards. Here's Michael Buffer, our ring announcer, with the announcement of the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. During the fourth round, there was an accidental headbutt causing a severe gash on the forehead of the champion. The contest was stopped at 150 of round number six under the rules of the WBO and the unified rules. We go to the scorecards for the rounds completed, including up to the point when it was stopped. Here are the score totals. Tony Palillo scores it 58-56 for the champion called her own. Tom Schreck scores the bout. 58-56 for the challenger, Rodel Mayall. And Steve Weisfeld scores the bout. 57-57, a three-way split. It goes into the books as a draw. A round of applause for both fighters. Champion retains his title. So very little settled in Madison Square Garden. A touch of deja vu for Ivan Colzron for the second consecutive contest. His fight ends early on a cuss. We'll chew the fat out of this one when we come back in a couple of minutes. So Ivan Calderon has retained his WBO title. Uh, not perhaps the most satisfactory of circumstances for the second fight in a row. The fight stopped on a cut to the head of the champion. Let's see what he had to say post-fight. Ivan, I know you're very disappointed. It's not the way you wanted to, to retain your title tonight. Twice in a row, the same situation. What's going on? Uh, remember, I'm the small guy, and I don't know why I'm the one who's getting the headbutts. They, they're supposed to be the one, the tall ones, who I don't get to even get near the headbutt. They come in, I come in, I'm the small guy, and they go all the way down. That's why I get the headbutts. But well, you don't have any doubt that they were accidental butts. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I know he didn't try to do it by it was a, uh, by accident. You know, I don't have a problem with it. Now, listen, nothing was proven here tonight. Even though you go home with your title, do you feel that you should give him a rematch? Yeah, yeah, sure. It, it was going to be a good fight. We was trying to get 
hot. We was, when I got cut, I got in the fight. I wanted to give the, the, the public one a lot of action, but the headbutt kept on coming, a lot of blood kept coming, and the doctor stopped the fight. Until you got caught, was the fight going the way you wanted it to, or, or did you, do you think that you needed to do a, a few things differently? No, no, the, the fight, I thought it was a good match, you know. And we was round around, round around. We was winning each one, one round, and, but, no, I don't know what could have happened going down because I was getting angry. I was pushing more pressure. He was putting more pressure. So we don't know who's going to get tied in the end. Now, Yvonne, I know that you really wanted to make a great impression tonight because you were told by the American Television Network showing the fight, but not showing you that if you had a good showing tonight, you would get on. Now, I mean, you know, obviously you want to do this again and show them you can do it. Yeah, sure. Uh, at least they saw a fight that there was blood. There was a fight, but. I couldn't, I can't say nothing. The doctor that the, the, the last decision. All righty, Ivan Calderon goes home with his title, but not satisfied with the way he retained it. Thanks very much for joining us. Yeah, a touch of deja vu for Ivan Calderon, Steve Bunce. Any, any blame on the champion there? Is there anything he could have done differently? Perhaps could he have fought on? No, not at all. What he's saying there is he's saying these tall guys, I thought, thought by the way, wasn't he fantastic fella, mm. Ivan Calderon? I mean, I, I don't know what I can't remember what he said last year after that that premature stoppage, but that sorry that that bad stoppage, but that was um, fantastic hearing him talk. There, what an honest, straight guy. It does help though when you've got a man like Wally Matthews standing next to you, who is a fantastic boxing man, fantastic guy, fantastic broadcaster. It helps instead of one of those other dimwits that we've seen too often asking ridiculous questions. There was Wally getting to it, nice and easy, nice and easy. No, Calderon is blameless, and Mayo, Mayo's blame, blameless, and thankfully Calderon didn't blame him. But what, what, what Calderon's asking there, and it's quite true, is these guys are four or five inches taller than me. What the hell are they doing butting me? Mm. I can't reach their heads. They've got to come down to reach my head. See, I've got to tell you, that one there, it does, tell, it does, does, it does, I mean, what is Mayo doing down there? If I was Mayo's corner man, I'd be screaming at him to keep your head up because as, he, as he's doing that end, he's leaving himself open to a short uppercut. I mean, because what we know. That was too deep to continue, wasn't it? It was a bad. No, thing. you know, I tend to agree with Wally again now. You know, Wally said, um, you won't find me disagreeing that often with people like Wally Matthews and Ron Borges, you know, old school guys. Just me. Uh, no, I, dis I disagree. <laughs> I don't disagree with you if you get something wrong. I don't disagree with you day to day. Um, I don't see a day to day. Otherwise, <laughs> I would disagree with you day to day. No, I'm yeah, only kidding, Nanny. But, the, the, you know, what, what, what the, situ the situation y you have there is that that cup. Was, it was vile, Andy. It yeah. was disgraceful, it was horrible, it was ugly. But it wasn't running in his eyes. You see little nicks at, 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 the pro, at some of the undercard fights or pro fights, which, uh, which you know, the referees let go. And when it's all, there's blood everywhere. When it's all over, it's only one butterfly stitch. That's going to take several stitches inside and outside. But it wasn't affecting his eyes. He wasn't dabbing at it. He wasn't panicking. He didn't have to panic. Perhaps he should have not panicked, but stepped up a little bit more. And he could have made sure of victory. He was a little bit too close mm. for my like, because I thought Calderon was in front. I thought the first judge was absolutely, absolutely right. So, it, so this is what I think. A cut that bad, of course it should be stopped. But here's the second part of the sentence. Only if it's stopping your seeing and going about your business. And it wasn't. So as ugly as that cut looked, it actually wasn't working. It wasn't actually stopping him. And that's because God, Lord knows what the trainer put in there. And you've nicked yourself. You, sh you do shave, don't you? I know you look young, but you very started very to shave, early. right? Well, you've nicked yourself shaving, right? And you're standing in front of the mirror, you nick yourself shaving, and you've got to lie down for half an hour, put an ice pack on before it stops. Am I right? This guy gets a cut that's this big. I'm not going to make any jokes about twins. It's a cut. It's this big. It's this wide. And it doesn't bleed. Imagine all the adrenaline pumping in. So you've got to ask yourself, what the hell are they using to stop it? Because I need that when I cut myself shaving. So that's, that, that's the point. It's not affecting his vision under any circumstances, but the cut's bad enough to be stopped. It's a contradiction in terms, but then in many ways, that's a bit of what we're about here on the box of the Satana, aren't we? Mm. We are a contradiction in terms sometimes. Absolutely. Let's hear from your pal Wally <laughs> Matthews again. He's with uh, Rodel Mayo right now. All right, you come out here. It's your third time at a, at a world championship. You have to leave after a technical draw. Did you think you had done enough to at least uh, be ahead after six rounds? Yeah, I, I'm very disappointed in this fight because you know I, I know and everybody knows I'm lead. I, I'm leading the score. He all, I, he only get four rounds, so I'm very disappointed. Uh, I don't know what happened. Why the judges do that? In, in your opinion, what was causing the butts? 
Uh, that's his style. If, if he get hard, that's his technique. He go go like that. He go head. Uh, it's his his fight. His, his last fight, two the last fight. He get he got also hit but from Hugo Casares. That's his style. That's his technique. If he get hard, if he get hard. He he, he was a hit but. Do you think that he was looking for the fight to be stopped on that cut? No, I, I don't think so. He, I, I, he, I think he didn't he didn't want to fight anymore. That's why he. He just, that thing, he just do like that. Now, how did you think the fight was going from your standpoint? Were you fighting the fight you wanted to fight? Uh, sorry, sorry, I didn't hear. Were you fighting the kind of fight you wanted to fight? Uh, I, it's not that. I don't, I don't like his style. I, I want, I want a, a fight, the real fight. Uh, his fight is, it's not boxing. It's an amateur style. That's why the, the people, you know, the, the people is. It, uh, he's not contented in that, that fight like that. Everybody wants a fight, uh, a, a real fight. I, if, 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 if he got a rematch, even tomorrow, even next week, even, every, anywhere. Well, I, I, if it makes you feel any better, he says that he owes you a rematch. So, yeah. all right, good luck. So, Mayo and Calderon, both equally respectful of each other. Interestingly there, Steve. <laughs> Mayol's first trip to New York has fought most of his fights in the Philippines, Indonesia, and Japan, a couple of trips to North America. So we mentioned the fight in Chicago or outside of Chicago a couple of years ago. Right, that was on the uh, undercard of David Diaz and Eric Morales. That was a big crowd, and I'll tell you what, you know, he stood up to that crowd pretty well. Of course, here it's a little bit different because when you fight in Madison Square Garden and you're from Puerto Rico, it's like your house. And he was told by the TV executives, you be sensational tonight and we'll give you a shot. Now, this is a guy who's only got six knockouts. He's a pure boxer. Let's see if he alters his style to try to impress TV executives. Wouldn't be the first time. You've seen Mayall before. Yes. And his only other fight here in the U.S. that was uh, outside of Chicago. Yes. And he lost to Solis. Yes, he did. That's Ulysses Solis, who's a terrific puncher in his own right. But I'll tell you what, Mayall had Solis on the canvas with a left hook. It was not ruled a knockdown, but I'll tell you, my eyes tell me it was, and I watched the replay today. He had him down. He had him hurt several other times. It was a very tough fight, but he was knocked out with an overhand right. So he's got some vulnerability, but he is certainly capable of hurting Yvonne Calderon. All right, they're both in at just over 106. Mayol does have four inches in height over Calderon. He's also got a significant reach advantage, which, you know, might make a difference here because, as I say, Calderon's a boxer. He does not, he does not look for knockouts. He did have one. To watch, but he can't quite make it. And there's a history of small guys who can't quite make it. Six knockouts says it all. Six knockouts, that says it all. This guy in the Filipino is being shown in Manila and all over uh, Britain and Ireland, this fight. They're obviously, they're big fans of our, of our Filipino pal. I th you know what, he's a, he's a pleasure to watch, Calderon. Pleasure to watch. Well, let's see him put his title on the line. It is Ivan Calderon against Rodo Mayer. Let's scare ourselves across to Madison Square Garden. Mayol, who's won his last two bouts after losing two in a row, is dangerous. He has 19 knockouts to his credit. And here we go, scheduled for 12. Calderon the southpaw, this is his first fight at Madison Square Garden, and he's really been looking forward to it. I, I know he has, and it's a little interesting wrinkle here. Uh, a little fly in the ointment was that he was disappointed to find out he would not be part of the American television telecast. Uh, I think in 2006 was the last time, but it's not his game. Right. He needs to box. How do you think the southpaw style will work against Mayo? You know, it's interesting, but in the, in the lower weight classes, you see more southpaws than you do in the, in the higher weight classes. I, I bet you that Mayo has got a pretty good, a pretty decent amount of experience against them. And another thing is, 
I love the left hook against the southpaw. He's got a good left hook. I think it's a great weapon. I don't think it should hurt him. And he used the good right hand lead and followed with a left hook. He's a very good straight puncher, Mayo. And he's backed up Calderon. You know, I can't emphasize enough the effect that Calderon, that it may have on Calderon that he wants to impress people in this fight because he desperately, he's 34 years old, wants right. to get a TV shot, you know, wants to get a big money fight. It's very tough for a guy who's 106 pounds and a lefty to get very much attention in this country. So we'll have to see. I mean, quite frankly, his style has not always been crowd-pleasing. He's a great boxer. For Calderon, more of a feeling out first round. They all have been a little more aggressive. A little wild with those two punches, end of round one.